Hello everybody, and welcome back to Space Engine. I forgot where I am. I'm somewhere in the galaxy. I don't know. Uh, let's find somewhere to go. <sighs> I was requested to go to the ARP-272 uh, merger. Apparently it does not exist. I thought it did. Let's try 271 then. Why not? If it's a merger, then it's a merger. If it's not, then no. Then where the hell is the one that I'm looking for? IRP272. There's 271 and 273, but not 272. Well, that's a little concerning. Let's try 2731 and 2732, because that sounds like a merger. Well, it's the beginning of a merger. It'll have to do, because I can't find uh, 272, unless I read it wrong, which is very possible. But, um, which galaxy should we go in? Hmm... Well, let's go into the, well, I kind of want to, let's go into the smaller one, actually. We'll find better night skies here. Anyways, um, what is new in the world? All kinds of stuff. <sighs> My lungs kind of hurt because it's really smoky outside because of wildfire smoke. And being someone with asthma, that kind of sucks, but whatever. So if I kind of don't talk as much, that's why. But I needed to do a video because, yeah. Uh, what kind of planets are we looking at here? Wrong button. Uh, a cold, arid Terra. Sure. Why not? Boop. Oh, it even has rings. Um... Right, so we're gonna go and we're gonna land somewhere down here. The atmosphere is thick. Six point three eight atmospheres. Uh oh. Now we're good. Alright, um Is that a glitch? Because there's the ring. Oh yeah, I think, I, think, I think it's just a glitch. It was supposed to be a surface detail. No, wait, no, it's a ring. Oh, it's the ring shadows. Ah, I get it. Nice. Anyways, uh, we're gonna chill out, base this volcano. Uh, where's the time? That's exposure. Let's see if we can get to a night time. Wow, daytime is takes a long time on this planet. And we're not gonna see the galaxies. Well, that's that's kinda of disappointing. Oh well, actually why there we go. Wow. Probably would have looked better if I found a planet that didn't have uh a like a horrifically thick atmosphere, but uh, that looks pretty good. You got the rings, got the the galaxy we're in, and then the uh, merger galaxy over there. That's kind of fun. And then above the atmosphere, there's the sun. Cool. <laughs> all right um yeah what's new in the world there's all kinds of stuff going on uh, a lot of stuff at mars got some missions going to, uh, to venus that's exciting um 
Hubble Space Telescope had a problem, but they seem to have resolved it, which is nice. Because it would kind of suck if it broke. It's like, oh, the James Webb will, will replace it, but it's like, yeah, whenever it launches. <laughs> this is kind of a fun little moon. See, it's the vistas that you really enjoy. I, like, you come to Space Engine for the for the vistas. I guess see if I can get rid of. There we go. Stop shaking. It's like a moon quake. There should be like a, uh, a surface walk mode. There probably is. I just don't know how to get to it. Where you can like move around but stay stuck to the surface as if you're walking. I don't know why it's vibrating like that. It just is. Huh. What an interesting place. I like it here. Uh, in my world, I've been very busy the last month. Like, very busy. I got kind of a job. It's more like an internship currently as a uh, a design engineer for an architectural firm. So I've been working with them. It'll eventually become paying. If I hope it does. For God's sakes. Um, I've also been doing some work on thruster designs for just my general projects. I'm currently developing a, uh, a cold gas thruster for chip satellites that runs on naphthalene, which is what mothballs used to be made of. But the, the idea is basically you have naphthalene and you just heat it up to about 70 degrees and it just outgasses and you direct the outgassing through a nozzle and boom, you got uh, a bit of thrust. It isn't a very powerful thruster, uh, but it's lightweight, it's very cheap, and it's very simple. So that's kind of what I'm working on, because I, I, the idea is to like incorporate it onto kind of like um, oh, like the Ambisat chipset platform, and uh, make some mini reaction wheels for it, and try to make a chip satellite, like basically a fully contained controllable spacecraft that weighs about as much as a yogurt container. And, uh, yeah. I, I kind of want to see if I can get it to ride share. So basically I want to see if I can make it lightweight and, like, small enough, lightweight enough, and innocuous enough that I can, uh, get it ride shared on, like, actual missions without too much hassle. One of my main goals is I want to see if I can get it on board uh, one of the Venus missions. <laughs> it's very unlikely, but I have eight years to get it to work, and I have some friends in uh, like the, the small sat spacecraft propulsion world, so wow, the ring is, is... Oh, I know what's wrong here. Uber's going very fast. Yeah, so you know it's not it's not impossible, but it's just not very likely. And I also I suspect I haven't actually looked at rings in Space Engine in a while. This feels like they've updated it recently because this is all particles and it doesn't render very well on my computer. But uh, that's really cool. I like that. And they're all very fast. But, yeah, whatever. So yeah, that's kind of what I'm working on. I also have a version for CubeSats, but my primary goal right now is ChipSats. I kind of want us to get one either going to the moon or Venus, just to test out the thruster in deep space as a maneuvering thing. To save power and weight, um, it won't have, like, its own high-gain communication system. It'll have to basically piggyback off the uh, communication system of whatever spacecraft it ride shares with. Which isn't a huge deal. Um, like with CubeSats, you can make collapsible, like high gain antennas that are like flat and fold out. But for the chipset, again, it's it's like when folded up, this whole vehicle will fit inside the volume of a Coke can. So <laughs> there isn't a lot of space. At be like, the, like the largest components will be um, some unfoldable solar panels just to kind of give kind of supply power to the engine 
because the actual vehicle itself will use very little power. It's a chipset for God's sakes. Uh, but the thruster needs to be able to heat up, you know, a nichrome wire consistently and kind of control um, orientation through some reaction wheels. So it needs it needs a bit more power than uh, the chipset can supply with just single forward-facing solar panels. <sighs> but that's just down the road. Right now I'm just kind of working on the prototype of the thruster. Because the actual thruster itself is incredibly cheap and easy to make. The expensive part is I need to get a vacuum pump for a vacuum chamber to test it. But I'm going to get a working model built and I'm going to start pitching it um, for funding uh, prospects at a few places. So we'll see how that pans out. Uh, 10 minutes? Wow. <coughs> yeah, the forest fire smoke really sucks. Like, my chest just feels heavy. But, oh well. It sucks, but it's only temporary. Unfortunately, this happens every year. And it seems to get worse every year. Because when I was younger, I don't remember there being forest fire smoke this often. But, whatever. I live in a, uh, a fossil fuel province where everyone thinks the oil companies are infallible and will last forever, so... Yeah. <laughs> All right, multicellular terrestrial life, organic. <sighs> oh, excuse me, it doesn't have much of an atmosphere. It has cool canyons. It's kind of a dusty place. I get kind of Mars vibes from this. Yeah, there's like the biome mats on the ground here. I assume some kind of plants. Uh, what kind of star is this orbiting? It's an orange dwarf, a K7. Yeah, okay. Green might make some sense here. I know with like around uh, a red dwarf star the prospects of green plants. This is literally the picture of a forest floor. You can see different kinds of coniferous, or um, yeah, deciduous leaves, uh, and even cones. Yeah, this is obviously a forest floor. These are very familiar earth leaves. But anyways, in a round like a red dwarf, you might expect plants to be like black, or uh, yeah, I just I I just a different color uh, to absorb more of the red spectrum of light uh, to get more energy out of the star because plants on Earth are largely green because they absorb most of like the red lights and the um, I think the blue and they reflect a lot of the green. So stars around a, or planets around a star with a dimmer light might have darker colored plants that uh, to get more energy out of what little. Uh, starlight they get. <clears throat> but this is a K type, it's an orange dwarf. So it's probably, a, a green would probably be okay. Black would probably work well here too. Uh, K types, I think, produce a bit more. Um, is it X rays or ultraviolet? I think it actually might, it might be ultraviolet they produce more of. So you might want a thicker atmosphere to, uh, or a stronger magnetic field to protect yourself from that. But, yeah, who knows? I personally like K-type stars, they're they're very cool, but I've talked about them a lot, so of course I would like K-type stars. What's that? That is a big ol' star. Uh, blue supergiant. No. No. What, what exists around this red dwarf? Eh, sure, why not? I also got my first COVID vaccine, like, what, three or four weeks ago? And uh, I was supposed to get my second shot last week, but my vertigo got really, really bad, as it does sometimes, and I wasn't able to actually make it to the appointment, 
I had to reschedule, and I'm kind of annoyed by that. Because everyone else in my household is fully vaccinated, but I unfortunately am not. But I'll get it here soon, eventually. Uh, I would like to... Wow, okay, here we go. Atmospheric pressure is 458 atmospheres, so it's a very thick atmosphere. Uh-oh. Well, we're underwater. See, now we're just playing Subnautica. Oh my god, this is a deep-ass ocean. It seems to get down to... Over a kilometer underwater. Like what, two kilometers? And then we pop back up. Curious. Wow, this is actually a cool place. Ooh. Shimmering water effects. <sighs> but yeah, so that's that's been kind of my week. It sucks. Actually, I got a requisition or a referral to a neurologist for the vertigo. Finally, after 20 years of complaining about it, I'm finally going to see if I can actually talk to a specialist about it. <laughs> Because for God's sakes, it's so annoying. Like ever since I was a kid, I've just I've had chronic vertigo. Like this, the room is always moving, and then I get these occasional moments where it just gets really, really bad, and it's like debilitating. Like I walk with a cane for God's sakes. I'm in my make mid to late twenties, and I walk with a cane. That doesn't seem right. But finally, I got uh, my doctor to go. Yeah, all right, we we'll give you a referral, and it's like thank you. Although it's probably something like neuritis, which is uh, an infection of the vestibular nerve. And if that is the case, then there's permanent damage. And I'm going to have to just get physio and try to make the best of it. Because if, you know, actually dealing with a medical problem when it's presented itself doesn't seem to be a uh, something that doctors do very well. Actually, it's more just like, if you have an anxiety diagnosis, you're no longer allowed to have medical care, just ever. That just seems to be the case. It's like if you have anxiety, if you're or if you're overweight, those two things seem to disqualify you from medical care because every doctor you talk to will blame all of your problems on either of those and they won't do anything about it, which is incredibly irresponsible, but I it's a very common thing I've seen and it makes me kind of mad, but eh. It's like I've literally gone to like what probably 20 something doctors so far this year uh, even more so last year and the year before like I go to the ER and um, urgent care very frequently and I it's always the same thing it's like you know I can barely walk I, I my vertigo is screwing me up and I feel like I'm dying and they're just like eh, it's just your anxiety go home and it's like but it's not. I know what the anxiety symptoms feel like. It is not anxiety, but... Apparently, if you've had vertigo all your life, uh, they can blame it on a condition you've only had for, like, you know, five years. <laughs> oh, well. Um, there isn't much else in this galaxy. Well, there's a lot in this galaxy, but it's a lot, a lot of it's blue sequence stars. Very bright stars. Uh, ooh, a hot area. Let's go there. Boop. Wow, look at that. Yeah, it's uh, seven atmospheres, almost eight atmospheres. That's fairly thick. And the surface is loading in. Rocks. Rocks and furrows. Well, it looks pretty. That's at least something. <laughs> Can I go any faster? Yeah. And it has volcanism. Huh. 
So it's geologically active anyways. But not much else to say about it. But anyways, I think I'll call it there. This video was eh, this is a little bit more of a boring episode, I'm sorry. But <clears throat> again, it's kind of hard to breathe, so it's kind of hard to talk. <laughs> oh well. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you have ideas for videos you'd like me to, or for things I'm going to talk about or places to go, feel free to say below. And, uh, space. <laughs>